Hello and welcome to Microsoft Hates Greg. Uh, today I got a couple quick topics uh, to cover uh, before we get started. Uh, number one is that uh, on Tuesday, uh, February 22nd at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I will be presenting at the Enterprise DNA Conference on Mushkukum. Uh, if you're a fan of Mushkukum, I would, and you want to find out what's coming next, and uh, I have some pretty exciting and a pretty exciting announcement to make. Uh, after the presentation. So if you're a fan, um, sign up for the Enterprise DNA conference and check out my uh, check out my presentation. All right, so today I covered uh, for while loops, covered for loops in previous videos. So I figured I was kind of obligated to cover recursion or previous value, if you will, in DAX, uh, which is an interesting subject that I've been working on for years and years and years. Um, so I have actually got a blog article out here, Previous Value Recursion in DAX from quite a while ago, 2019. Um, now, how this relates to Mushkukum, I don't really have too much in the way of recursive or recursive emulated um, things within Mushkukum, um, but I do have uh, one thing that came out of this uh, work in this area and that actually is running product so running product is essentially you know it's a running product right it's just like a running sum or anything else um, but it came out of the uh, this work i was doing on what was called kaplan meyer survival curves okay so kaplan meyer survival curves i wrote a blog article on this basis came out of a guy uh, did this in tableau and I was trying to emulate it in Power BI. I think you can see it was way back in 2018. And uh, the Tableau version basically relied on a Tableau function called previous underscore value, um, which is a pretty cool, handy little function. And there was nothing like it in DAX. So what I had to do instead was I had to create a table, right? And then I had to create some columns in that table. And then I was able to create that running product and then that was able to get me to where I could generate my bell curve, or my uh, my curve, my Kaplan Mile survival curve, right? Um, so, so out of that, I came, you know, and I actually submitted an idea, which a grand total of 21 people have had voted for, which is basically a previous value DAX function. Um, has never gained any traction, so there, there's that. All right, so now the next time I ran into pre previous value or recursion was I was doing, I was working on run run Jakarta. OK, and run is a numerical method in mechanical engineering and the engineering sciences where you're trying to figure out a curve fit for like a differential equation or something like that. Um, and what you have to do, and so as you can see, let's go to the Wikipedia page here. So as you can see, it's very accurate. So the red line is the, the actual differential equation values and then the whatever color that is, um, chartreuse or something, is a runge cutta um, approximation approximation of it. Um, so as you can tell, it's far more accurate than pretty much anything else. Uh, and the way it works essentially is for each, you're trying to you know, start at a point, trying to figure out the next point, and it's using these K, these slope values in order to calculate out where the next point should be, is get, should be or end up going, going to be. Okay, so we'll get into the heavy math of it because it is, it's a numerical method and it is pretty, uh, Pretty nasty math gets involved. Not too terrible, but but as you can see here, I'll just go through the salient points of this. Um, you're trying to calculate W a bit, and ultimately, okay. Um, but in order to calculate W at the next point, you need the W from the previous step. So this is RK4, so four-step basically recursion. You are calculating a bunch of values, and you eventually end up with W. You then use that point, that W point, in the next iteration. To calculate to start off your k1w where you calculate and end up using to create a calculate a new w which is on and on right in the next couple steps so the way that i solved this here um is basically nesting bars right so i've got a var step one and i've got to do my calculation of w then i create a var step two and i calculate my my calculation of w then i have a var step three calculate my value of w so the nice thing here, right, is that I calculate W here, I use it here, I calculate a new version of W here, I use the 
W here, it's actually referring to this W, not that W in terms of the value of it, because it's been redefined. And so this whole nesting of bars is one way of, it's a, again, it's emulating uh, recursion. If this was true recursion, right, then I would be able to write this sequence of calculations once, and then for step two, I would just call back to the same calculation and perform them over again. You know, two recursion. I'm not gonna. You guys know what recursion looks like and what it doesn't look like, and it doesn't generally look like this. Um, but it's a way to emulate it, right? So there's that. And yeah, I have, yeah, I have a whole blog article on that one as well. And then I came across. Uh, I was trying to mess around with this, and I came across. I came in came across and created this previous value, AKA recursion um, quick measure. Again, it's not in Mushkukum because uh, it was always ugly, um, but this is just brute force recursion calculating out the Fibonacci series, okay? So trying to get the first 13 values of Fibonacci series, which zero, one, and then, you know, the second, you know, the next number in line is the addition of, of the two previous values and on and on and on, Fibonacci. So what this is doing actually is this is creating a, a separate table for every iteration within the Fibonacci sequence. And this is all done within one measure. And I was never ever happy with this solution. It worked, um, but kind of sucked. So I was thought, you know, and when, when I was going through with the for and while loops for, I was, you know, the concept was I'm going to use the rows as the iterators, right? So each iteration through the for and while loop is the separate row so the the thought struck me well you know for previous value in, in that in recursion what if we use the a column iterator so what if we added a column to a table for every iteration through the loop if you will and so i came up with and, and created this uh except right so i have my row which starts out the fibonacci sequence so zero and one and then i add a column so it's the next step, I add zero and one together. At the next step, I add one and two together, four, add two and three together. And as you can see here, this does result in a Fibonacci sequence. So zero, one, one, two, three, five, eight, 13, 21, 34, 55, 89, 144, 233. Um, those are the first 13 values in the Fibonacci sequence. So I think this is a lot cleaner way of doing this um, versus all those multiple tables and all of that. Um, again, it's not true recursion. It's or true previous value, if you will, or I don't know what you call it, but if you need to preserve values um, of previous calculations, this is a technique to do it, right? Just gen yourself a table, and then for every value that you need to preserve, you just tack it on as a, as a, as a column. And you can always refer to it, refer back to it that way then. So that was really all I had for this video. Um, again, hope to see uh, everyone on the Enterprise DNA Summit and uh, my session and looking forward to sharing some really exciting information with you guys. All right, everyone have a good, good weekend and I'll see you later.